Hello, I'm Jared Poland and welcome to ProPhoto101.com. Today I want to talk a little bit about... No? I'd like to... Today I'd like to go over some of the lenses that... I'd like to talk about some of the Nikon lenses that are... Jared Poland, Fronos Photo! Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk episode number one two three one two three one a two a three. Do you know what that is, Sutter? Um, Alice in Wonderland. No. Right? Next guess. One more. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Mr. Owl, could you tell me how many licks it takes to get uh, to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? Oh, I haven't seen that in forever. He does the three licks and then bites it, crunches it. it. Yeah. So anyway, what you guys saw starting off this show was just a little excerpt from a video that was posted seven years ago today. Excellent video. Excellent. Seven years ago today. Wow. Now, I believe it, it well, it's of me. I, I know Sutter was born me. yet. In, 2000, <laughs> in 2008, <laughs> Sutter was born, barely. Yeah. But so He was a toddler. I believe I shot it somewhere in 2008. Eight ish period because I had an iPhone. Yeah. Which means that came out in October of 07. Oh, so it definitely would have been eight. You had a first gen iPhone? Yeah, first wow. gen. So I, I, I'm rating that video based off of I answer the phone at the end and it's an original iPhone. Gotcha. Um, so that video, I, I posted it again with with commentary this time. Like I, 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 I talk, I, you can pop up on the screen, people can click and go listen to it. Mm -hmm. and, and really, it's talking about how if I was that bad in front of a camera in 2008 and now I sit here today and we can make show after show after show or just make a video after video after video just spitting it off the top of my One head done. Yeah. then anybody can do it I said what's holding you back if I made videos that bad in 2008 or a video ba that bad what is holding you back because people are always like oh you're just so good that shows you how bad I was do you think that that 2008 Jared could have turned into this Dude, huge transformation. I mean, even just the way you look too. Mm. Well, that was well, one. It was minus the gun show. <laughs> well, I had the tucked in polo shirt, the Nikon, yeah. the the non fro. I think you had like a mini fro. Didn't well, you? it was still it was growing. That yeah. was the early awkward stage of it growing. <laughs> you look like you're like 14 in that video. Stubble, and you were like 25 or something, right? Go back. Uh, I'm 34 right now, so then you can Older subtract. Than that. Wow. Yeah. So you're 27. Was I really that old when I made that video? I don't look it. You don't look it at Was all. I really that old? I feel like that video is older than seven years, but I guess it's not. Yeah, but if I have an iPhone, it's That's no, true. It's, That's no true. it's no earlier than October of 2007 or whenever mm -hmm. that came out. I think it was seven, right? Oh, God. I've had so many. Well, that's a long time ago. Seven years ago is a huge change. It is. But what, what were we talking about before the show? Uh, just the things how things have changed well basically the whole point of the video which Stephen had already put up on the screen if you want to see me talking about it beforehand is just to show you that I really did suck in front of the camera horrible and then I didn't make an I didn't start Frono's photo for two years after that Frono's photo didn't uh, two plus years it wasn't even a thought in my mind yet that there was to be Frono's photo well that recent Sennheiser review that we just put up um, when I went back to find some of your early videos with the, with your first Sony microphone yeah. when you first got it, I was literally looking at like the first 10 videos you posted as Frono's photo and every single one of them, your delivery was just not even close to what it is now. It evolved. I mean, you really, really came a long way. Well, the evolution that. is... And that was only four years ago. Right. Well, five. exactly. Well, that was, that was that. But like I said, I didn't start doing Frono's photo for over two years after, after I posted that privately. Mm -hmm. So I basically gave up at that point when I made that video. I just couldn't do it. What, what you were re, you were making you were making fun of me earlier. What was I saying again? You were just redo like no. Nah. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> when you're doing the video, you're just like, "Hi, I'm Jared Polt." No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the no. I've got the, no. What did you What did you say? Like you're from Nikon Professionals or something? No, too, it or? was it was Pro Photo One Hundred and One. Pro Photo One Hundred and One. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little secret about that is that, and I said this to Simon Joinson yesterday, <laughs> is that I was like, they'll definitely link to my page. Why wouldn't DP Review link to my page if I just say, look, I started a site. Can you guys put me as a recommended site? And clearly, you were so good. Oh, the best. Anyway, so so that's that. You guys watched that video. You saw the intro to it. 
I just take the words of wisdom because yes, I sit here today making video after video that I think is really solid and very good in front of the camera. And I want you to think to yourself, what is holding you back? If you're looking to do something, all you have to do is look back at that video of me and say, if I freaking could do it, then what? The, then there's no reason why you can't because that guy in 2008 had no style. Not that I have much style now. <laughs> not I, had, that I wear the same shirt every day. But. I had, it doesn't matter. My, I, I had no confidence or I didn't have as much confidence. I had confidence, but not in front of the camera. And all that came with choosing to transform my body yeah as the one of the first steps was acknowledging that i wanted to change make a change yeah that's and i was definitely I, where your confidence came from partly like. and i was it was like 29 years old and i didn't want to do the whole when i turn 30 i'm gonna start working out mm -hmm. i'm a big fan of if you want to make a change you just do it you acknowledged it then take the action yeah i'm gonna start working out when i'm 29 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. All right, so enough, enough of that. The, uh, not enough of that. Just the whole point is to just you can do it. If I was that freaking bad, just gotta record 1,800 videos. <laughs> Whatever. I but got, obviously that helped recording a video literally every day. Well, you just get better. Here's the secret to it. I transformed my body. That gave me more confidence to be in front of the camera, Definitely. thinking that I looked better mm -hmm. and I wouldn't worry about what people said. Also, the other thing was the earmuff moment. And it's not a bad thing, but it, it is a curse. I said, fuck it mm -hmm. when I'm sitting in front of the camera. And what that means is I was worried about what people would say about me. But then I got to the realization that, well, I'm the one making the video. They're not the one trying to make the video. I'm actually doing it. So part of the idea was I need to accentuate what I'm talking about. I need to be up. I need to get my level up. I need to be excited because that's going to go over well, better than what other people are doing. And, and, that's, and that's really what started to happen. I just Because you know, like when we were at the bug vacuum thing at CES, mm -hmm. there were... People like watching. twenty some people that yeah. stopped by, and that was one of the best things we did. Which I love when I'm filming. You, yeah, you hate it. I, I don't. I still get self conscious, but then I just block it in my head. I See, block you can, them out. You can really mentally block all that stuff out, which is really hard for a lot of people. I just like, block it out. They can film themselves, you know, privately in their own house, but then the second they're in front of a team, they, you know, stage I, front. and you just get in. All I say is get in your mind and block it out. And just do it. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks because you're the one that's doing it. The only issue you have is if we do need to cut or something or if I make any motion in the background, you're like, what? What? What, what? Steven? Squirrel? What? <laughs> what are you doing? What are yeah. you doing in the background? That's the only issue. So I try not to like move at all when you're filming because you, uh, you get thrown off pretty easy with that stuff. But. All right. So this is what happens when you get good at being in front of the camera. Well. You can do plugs. Whoa. All right. Let's talk about the road. Postman Fro brought this in. Not Road. Shit. Adamo. <laughs> I was going to say. These are Road. This is Adamo yeah. Shogun. Um, Postman Fro brought this out. This is a... I'm opening it. Shogun. Let's just open it this way. It's a serious case. It That's is one a serious thing. case. Adamo really does well with their cases, man. This right here Ooh. is the Shogun. Ooh. That's nice. If you're shooting 4K video and you want to record it to something... This is what you need right now. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the only thing out there that's doing it, whether you have the Sony A7S or you've got uh, the, the G, what's it, GH4 from Panasonic. Yep. You need an Atomos to record 4K externally. They only allow you to record with an external recorder, Exactly. Right? You can't even record internally to yeah. the Sony. This is what people are using. This is a $2,000 unit, so it's not for everybody. But if you own a 4K camera... You need to take advantage of it. Then you need it. it you yeah. need this. There's no excuses for the oh, it's two thousand dollars because then why did you buy the camera in the first the place? The camera's probably twenty grand that you bought. Well, no, unless it's the GH4 is cheap. I'm thinking of like the a Sony red. is cheap. Yeah. When I say cheap, in the three thousand dollar range that you're spending, it's cheap. For it's inexpensive for what it is. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. If you're doing that and you're investing in that to make four K video, then you need something like this. This is a seven inch screen. Touch screen, beautiful screen, by the way. Very nice. We're probably going to start using it here. Yeah, might as well. Might as well because they we're not doing 4K yet, and we're probably not going to do a raw talk in 4K anytime soon. But we've been using Never the Atomos know. Ninja 2 on the center camera for a long time. Before that, we used the original Atomos, and you can pick those things up, or the Atomos Ninja. Well, we did Ninja 2, then the Blade. Oh, oh, okay. So we used the Ninja 2, 
then the blade, and, and now I think, the Shogun. And now, and now we're going to switch over to the Shogun. Mm -hmm. So there's different levels of pricing if you're looking for it. If you're doing DSLR video of any kind, something like this, where we need the main camera to record consistently more than 20 minutes, in this case for Nikon, or 30 minutes for, for the Canons, mm -hmm. you need a device that's going to do that. And we use the Atomos, and we recommend it. We personally use it, and they sent us this. We don't pay for this. Just letting you know, they did give us this to use, but that's so we can make a Pluggy McPluggerson <laughs> and also go out and use it. Like My idea for us to go out and use this is to get a 4K camera and to go out and use some of the other sliders that we have and make just a cool video in the city. That'll be. I would like to use the maybe the Sony A7S well, or the A7 in general because that's specifically what they paired this well, with. Well, I'm going to get it from Borrow Lenses. Yeah, that would be great. And we'll do that and we'll go out and we'll shoot and, and we'll use it. I mean, here... And 4K man, on especially when you're when you're using when you're looking at it on like uh, the 27 inch monitors now, it just looks so beautiful. It's so sharp, you know. And and I, I was showing this case in the video I made on Facebook today. It's almost like these are these are magazines that pop in. They literally are. Reload, reload. Oh, and the only bad thing that I li uh, don't like the only thing I don't like about the case is they should have had a pull tab that attaches oh, underneath yeah. because I just tore it this morning. See, that allows you to lift it up to see what's down under. Yeah, because we thought I that. I believe in the land down under. <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> that was, I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. And the chances you can make it now. Then I'm out to the bone come down. I believe in a thing oh. called love. I, I don't want to yell. My neighbors get home. He's going to yell at me. He probably is. It came at the board meeting. Don't I, I like yell. that they have also, they have mini XLR, which is great um, for basically plugging directly in audio wise to here uh, and they, this also works with their power their new power station that they have I forget I think it's just called the power station um, where it lets you do the hot swappable removable batteries so that would be great for something like this all right and it's lighter than we expected and it has a beautiful screen and I can't wait till we start using it but just check it out Atomos has been a supporter of the show for over a year now and I like working with people not only that make quality gear that we like but that also like to support the show as well because they get it. Mm -hmm. They get it. That is what when we talk about companies that get it and companies that don't get it. Can you get that fuzz off the <laughs> off the thing? No, the, no, no. This right here. What is that? Wait, is that actually nah, that's on like the on Atomos? On there, yeah. Oh, that's it's like, like under the film that they have on the screen. No, the film is off. Oh no, that's like a button or something. Or is it just a green light? It's, it's probably a it's red just a light, light for recording. It's probably a red light. <sighs> because it's so smooth and sleek that it it kind of threw me off. All right, let's get this off the table. Serious case, man. What was I just saying? Uh, you're talking about how they were good people. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's great, like, when, uh, in the beginning, how you just, you know, we are talking on. directly to the CEO. Let me just right say the, the plug's over. Plug's over, now we're just talking about <laughs> Atomos. You forgot to put that in the case. Can you remove uh, that yeah. from the floor? I mean, put it on the floor. Yeah, originally we were talking to the CEO. He just wanted to hear our ideas. Yeah. He's like, so what do you think we should be doing? And he was just like, what, what should we do? What should we do with this? And like, blah, what do you blah, like? Blah. What don't you like? Yeah. And what do you want to see better for you? It's great to you? be that direct with, you know, the head honcho. But they got it. Mm -hmm. And Heather gets it. Heather and it, gets it. That's the cool part, because sometimes you get companies that are like, we need to see X amount of clicks coming from our banner ad because banner ads are fucking... Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said I wouldn't curse this week much. You cursed so, a lot last week. I know. Too much. <laughs> Somebody complained. One person. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of other people complained, but they didn't comment about it. So... <laughs> I just when they when they don't get it, it, it sucks. But yeah. when you work with people that get it, that it's like go do your thing organically, mm -hmm. it's gonna be so much better. All right. So moving forward, that's Atomos. Check him out all the time. Uh, we if you need your solution, we use it. Last week I talked about the guy who lost his arm as a pitcher. Yes. His name is Dave Dravecki. I actually looked up the video. It's, you saw it? Yeah. Not Dave Drabecki, it's Dravecki. With a V. So I got that wrong last week, mm -hmm. but I got it right this week. There you go. I watched this whole documentary about it. Really ins inspirational stuff. Really cool. Yeah, there's a couple of clips on from documentaries on YouTube that you can check out. Too. There's actually a full one uh, that, that a reader sent me to something that the Giants did, hmm. and, it, and it's pretty good. Okay, uh, Chicago. Chi we have to go to Chicago. We're going to be there March 17th and leaving on the 18th. We're only St. coming Patty's in day. one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is St. Patrick's Day, and we have to go for a meeting. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the meeting is, but it's, it's just something Top I'm working on. meeting. And it so happens to be in Chicago, and that's why I'm making the trip, because it's important that I go out there and do it in person. Mm -hmm. So we figured, why not do a mobile raw talk? Squarespace is sponsoring the mobile raw talk, as always. So if you want to go to squarespace.com slash fro to get your 10% yes. off, 
I, I was gonna. You say, were doing the audio blocks, yeah, video blocks slash one. Go, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is this is uh, the Squarespace. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that allow us to basically go wherever we want, and they pay for that, and they cover the expenses because the room is gonna cost me some money this time because it's a it's a cabaret style thing that has seventy seats. I'm going to be selling the tickets this time. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm selling the tickets is simple because I think what happens is when we were in Florida, we we moved almost 200 free tickets yep. and only had 70 people or so show up. A, that's what sucks about giving away free tickets. So the idea, and I'm still verifying it with the, they actually have a bar there. Okay. So they have a bar so you can drink and, and enjoy it. And, Hell yes. And, and, it's a, and it's an all ages show. So you're just going to have to show ID to drink. I'm trying to work something out. The tickets won't be more than 10 bucks. But you're going to get something in return when you show up. So you're going to basically get something back in return. Cool. You know, I don't want to say what what it could be because I want to make sure that it actually happens. But the reason I do that is so that you actually show up. That if you buy a ticket and it costs you 10 bucks or you drop 20 quick bucks. Yeah, it's not like we're charging like 40 to bucks no, or something like that, it's, you know. It's going to be 10 bucks. Yeah, reasonable. And that and and whatever is left, I'm you know, what I'm trying to work out, we're going to make it that you get Ten dollars in value at least back, but you're gonna get more than ten dollars in, in entertainment back. I'll it's tell like you that bag, much. Yeah, um, but that's why we're doing it so that it, it takes away from the people who just take a ticket and then I cut off the sales altogether, and then people that could actually make it can't get a ticket. Yeah, this way, ten bucks. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get stuff back in return. So it makes it less expensive. It's like the station that I used to work for. You know, we would host these free events and they would need to download a free ticket, but we would give away 8,000 tickets, yet 4,000 would show up because they don't feel obligated to go because they didn't pay for anything. It's like, oh, I'm missing the show, whatever, it's free, blah, blah, blah. It, that's the exact thing that we, we saw that that happened. By the way, nice shirt. You want to show the camera? Ooh, you like it? Yeah. You, you uh, getting dressed up for something? Uh, you know, I like to party, so I'm just uh, <laughs> business casual. That's right. That's what I wore during... Um, the game show, which is either out or coming out soon, mm-hmm. and that's why the gold foil is still on the floor, because I yes. just figured that was the backdrop that we had. Uh, we're already into the show pretty far. Yeah, we are. Uh, that's because I had a lot of talking to do. And one more thing before we get to photo news. Mm-hmm. That was Chicago. I want to do an update on YouTube. Yes. Because if people have noticed, there's now a check mark next to my name. Ooh, I'm now verified on YouTube. I didn't know that. Yes, it happened two days ago. And uh, now, does that get you any benefits? No, it doesn't. Or you just look cool? I asked. I yeah. Because who did I ask? My YouTube partner manager. Ooh. Guess what I have, people? Moving on A up. YouTube partner manager. Now, remember how I said I don't have one? And how could you? I'll tell you how I got it. A couple of weeks ago, YouTube. Uh, I went up to YouTube Space New York mm-hmm. to do a class to allow me to basically use their studios. Now, that's for anybody that has 5,000 subscribers or more. Which is great. Which is Yeah, it's a great opportunity. I took the opportunity to go up there with the mindset that I want to talk to somebody about helping me get a YouTube partner manager or somebody to work with. So I met somebody there. She helped me out. I gave her a bobblehead as my business card. She <laughs> loved it. And I asked her if she could figure you know help me figure this out. And she... Two and a half weeks later, I had a, a YouTube partner manager. Very cool. Which was after the show that we recorded the other day. Um, and they're young too, aren't they? They sound. The guy sounds young. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi I'm fifteen. <laughs> I'm still in high school. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so you can pop up the video right here, so people can hear the little thing about YouTube from last week. Yes. Or two weeks ago, mm-hmm. the the ranty McRanter thing thing there, which was on. The new rules, the new terms of services, and I have an update from my YouTube partner manager. I'm going to read it Legit update. as an update exactly from him cool. for what is what you can do. Here's a more specific answer to your product placement question. Creators are welcome to do paid product placement videos with brands. Very similar to what we just did with Atomos. Mm-hmm. Very similar to what we do with Rode and all of the other people we work with. We integrate it organically into the videos. Uh, working with brands and incorporating the brand logo product into the video itself. So this would include audio where the creator is speaking about the product or brand that is with that is within the policy and a OK. So what I just did is a OK. Mm-hmm. Logos can be shown within the video. So for instance, say the creator is working with Home Depot. Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> and they go to the store. Showing the store signage during filming is totally fine. Other examples include if the creator is working with a brand on a specific product and use the product in the video. Here's an example from Wishbone. Ooh. <laughs> this is okay as it's part of the actual video content and worked organically into the video. 
YouTube doesn't want to see logos or ads burned into the video during post-production where the user can tell it's not part of the native video and can confuse the logo burned in ad for an ad that YouTube served. I hope this helps. Um, now that cleared it up. Yeah. Because even when we did the game show, we have the arc spin spinning logos that Todd's putting in after the fact. Yep. That is okay because it's organic. What you cannot do is you can't take... Um, basically burn a commercial in, right? You, they can't supply you with a commercial that, in essence, they would have paid for as a pre-roll. It's not something that you created. Say it's the Nissan Rogue commercial for 15 seconds. The Nissan's like, hey, make this, you know, put this in your video, and you burn that in, and then you come back, and you can't do that yeah. because that's an ad format that YouTube offers, but you can show the logo. You, I should probably make a separate video about this for people, actually for YouTube creators, but I hope now, that doesn't offend the 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 photographers out there what about burning say a logo in like the title card which to me it sounded like you couldn't do that you can't do the burning of the logo into the title card okay the reason is youtube now the reason they change the terms of service is they offer a six second pre-roll okay. option so what you can do is instead of doing a squarespace logo it can just say squarespace mm. in normal text okay that you can do on a title card it's just funny you can put the text but not the actual logo Right, but as long as it's organic in the video, which is how we do it, yeah, that's the whole purpose of, of working product placement in is that it's organic and it's beneficial for me. The readers get something out of it, like taking the Atomos or, or saying that we use it. We actually use it here. We do. So that's organically talking about it. So now, why don't we get to photo news? Because we're like already a half an hour into the show. we're about an hour in. <laughs> uh, first up, Harvard School for Engineering and Applied Sciences. Can I interrupt you one more time? Already? Yeah, this is, this is different interrupting. One thing I want to ask you guys to do, if you watch on iTunes, please review the show, leave a review over there, and give it the amount of stars you think it deserves. If you think it deserves zero stars, give it zero stars. If you think it deserves five stars, give it five stars. Please leave a comment there over on iTunes just so other people can see what type of show it is. And, you know, the more, basically, the more comments and, 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 and stars and ratings you get, it kind of helps your algorithm and, and to show up. Cool. So that's why I'm asking you to do it. Please. Thank you. Please. Steven. Uh, Harvard School for Engineering and Applied Sciences are making lenses smaller and better after expanding on a previous lens design. The engineers are making completely flat and ultra-thin glass lenses by adding nano silicon, silicone antennae that bend light. This, in turn, will help from producing chromatic aberration like current lenses do. Uh, this design was originally mocked up in 2012, but it could only bend one wavelength of light as opposed to the three, red, green, and blue, that are needed for a full-color photograph that the current design can do. Now, Harvard is currently applying for a patent as it seeks commercial applications for its new lens technology. Now, the name given to the new lens is Acromatic Metasurface. Whatever yeah. the hell that means. Uh, hello, guys. This is... Hi. Hello. So mm -hmm. what is Acromatic my... Metasurface, Jared? Hello. My, my... Did they give any names? What do you mean? Did uh, they say no, anybody? No, they didn't name any engineers now. I'm, I'm an engineer from Harvard. Harvard. And Harvard. I've come up with... What's it called? Uh, the achromatic metasurface lens. First, first, that's the first problem. Is <laughs> nobody knows what the hell they're gonna call that thing. Yep. I'm I'm from Harvard, and we came up with the achromatic sur super service lens, and it is gonna be the greatest thing ever because it, it it absorbs multiple colors like R G B, like Roy G Biv. And you could totally just get. It's just gonna be super thin and allow your pictures to be amazing. Uh, yeah. Let me just tell you about it. Um. <laughs> If anybody's looking for a date, I, I mean, I could I could use a date, but I'm not very confident. And uh, yeah, mm, okay, Let, um, please, no pictures, no no picture, please, no pictures. I may be from Harvard. Do you like apples? I got a number. How about them apples? <laughs> Are you on that date dating website, SmartPeopleMeet.com? What? No, I don't know if that's real, but that really? would be funny. <laughs> no, that's geekmeat.com. Geekmeat.com. M-E-A-T. <laughs> I was going to say, what what meat? Do you like meat? Oh, God. Oh, check out my geek meat on geekmeat.com. For girls that like geeks, you can check out my meat Ooh. at geekmeat.com. Oh, slash XXX. 
Vince Vaughn in the cast of Unfinished Business released a set of stock business photos, and they're pretty awesome. Uh, 20th Century Fox teamed up with Getty to release the images. They will reveal 12 photos total, uh, releasing four photos each week in promotion for the movie. Uh, the photos can be downloaded and used for free via Getty's iStock service. And they're like super cheesy, generic, like business type photos. They're all like leaning over a desk, like looking at bar graphs, and they're like, yeah. They were good. Fun. That was funny. It's a good promotion. I thought it was very a great smart. promotion. Very uh, creative. Very creative. Uh, moving forward. You know why? Because they found a new executive on geekmeet.com. <laughs> In gear news, Sony announced four new full frame lenses for their E mount camera system. Four. Uh, the, new lin- the new lenses include the 28 F2, 35 14, which features Zeiss glass, 90 millimeter F28 macro, and 24 to 240 <laughs> millimeter F35 to 63. Now, this brings. So, three t- out of four aren't bad. Yeah. This brings the total number of FE lenses up to 11. How many? 11. I'm 11? The 28 F2 is going for 450 bucks. The 3514 will be $1,600. Uh, the 90 macro is 1100 and the 24 to 240 will be a grand. That's pretty expensive. 24 to 240? What's the aperture on that? That's 35 to 63. And for that's how a grand. much? A grand, a thousand bucks. Hi, Sony. You guys need to go hire somebody from geekmeet.com to make that uh, super slim lens. Better and less expensive. What I don't get is about, well, I guess the 3514 is so expensive because it has this ice glass because the 28F2 isn't that bad, 450. Um, now, they also released a new software update that speeds up start time for certain uh, E-mount lenses as well. So Great. Finally, some more lenses on the Sony side. Great. World Press Photo has stripped photographer Giovanni Troilo uh, of his first place award from the recent contest for misrepresenting and staging his shot, apparently. Uh, apparently, the shot he took from his contemporary issue <laughs> hold series. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold what? on. You said apparently like three times. Apparently, and that apparently reminds me of that kid's video. Pop this up on the screen. The kid's video. Make a note. What kid? Ap- apparently, this was the best ride I've ever been on. <laughs> Ap- a- apparently, my grandfather says I shouldn't talk to strangers, but apparently, uh, I had the best time of my life here, and a- apparently, you're kind of pretty. He's funny, dude, a- that kid. A- a- apparently, I um, I came here to have some hot dogs, but apparently, I enjoyed the ride so much that apparently... I just, I just got to come up with a new word, apparently. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was good. <laughs> um, so anyway, like I said, the shot he took from his contemporary issue series, it's called The Dark Heart of Europe. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this photographer, they took away his first place uh, oh, award right, go ahead. from the World Press Photo Contest. So uh, he took the shot, The Dark Heart of Europe. It wasn't taken in the city he was documenting, uh, but rather a city that's 30 miles away. In their words, they say the, tr- the story was not in compliance with the entry rules, and therefore the award must be revoked. Really? Yeah. That's Wait, what said. so he didn't really do anything wrong Not to really. The image? It's just not part of the story, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> uh, so wait, there's okay. So I get it. The, the the photo story that was submitted apparently said, <laughs> apparently <laughs> said that that the photo was taken in a different area. So he lied. Correct. The photo sucked in the first place. I don't I even understand. Sucked. But, but what? It, 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 that's the they, world world press photo. There there was wasn't say, anything other pressing photos that were better apparently <laughs> than that. Now, apparently, world press photo says that it investigated the claims and found that one of the photos had been taken in Molenbeek, Brussels, rather than Charleroi. No, no. It was taken in Brussels sprouts? <laughs> I was waiting for that. The organization questioned Troilo about this, and the photographer admitted that he had misrepresented the location. They added that the World Press Photo Contest must be based on trust in the photographers who enter their work and in their professional ethics. We have checks and controls in place, of course, but the contest, don't work. <laughs> but the contest simply does not work without trust. Uh, we now have a clear case of misleading information, and this changes the way the story is perceived. A rule has been broken, and a line has been crossed. And who gives it? I mean, at this point, this is how many years in a row has this happened with the World Press has Photo? It? I don't know. Why don't you just submit the raw file to begin with, with geotagging information? And I mean, or just accept the freaking photos for what they are. I thought they do submit the original files. I don't know. Not with geotagging. I think they have to send. Hey, Sutter's here. Sutter is here. I'm here. (laughs) Um, I think if it places anywhere, they need the raw files at that point, but not in the submission process. I could be very wrong. But yeah, their rules are super strict. Yeah, that's what it seems. Uh, Now, as a result of this whole issue, Italian photographer. Giulio? <laughs> Gilo? That's that would be it's like G G I U L I O. No, wouldn't that be Gilio? close to like Giulio? Giulio? Or 
Jello. Jello. <laughs> is it like Gilio? <laughs> like Gigli? Gilio Di Sturco is now the first prize winner of the category with his series Chollywood. It's like Bollywood, but for China. So it's like Chinese Hollywood. That's racist. That's what they call it. It's called Chollywood or Hollywood. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. C-H. Anyway, that's it for that story. Apparently, Apparently. next story. <laughs> 600 vintage cameras are now for sale on eBay. Uh, the listing has about three weeks to go. And, is and going Sutter just came in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> the listing has about three weeks to go and is going for a buy it now price of $34,900. Apparently that's too expensive. <laughs> the cameras range in date from 1880 to 1980. And the description claims the lot could be turned into one of the largest camera museums in the world. Apparently. Uh, includes eight different retinas, 10 different stereo cameras, 28 different twin lens reflexes, uh, three being roll reflexes, uh, Luftwaffe Leica replica, which I don't even know what which that I is. Which I don't know what that is either. Early Canon copy of Leica and two early Nikon copies of Leica, 37 different light meters, three early Greyflex, uh, 4x5 crown graphic with flash cool. units. Um, I have one of those. Two Kodak 120 medalists, three giant Kodak Kodak Instamatic dealer display slash advertising pieces and a ton Wait, more. You, what, what's your Grayflex? What, what do you mean? You have one? Yeah, I have a, a Grayflex uh, Crown it graphic. graphic. What is it? A 4x5 camera. Speed graphic? No, I have the Crown graphic. No, how's that work? It works. No, I mean, how's it work? Do you oh, have oh. <laughs> film backs for it? Yeah, um, you load sheet film into film holders and it has like a spring back. So you load the holder in, pull the dark slide, and then fire. It's a leaf shutter lens. I'm thinking I need to use Ooh, that for a five-minute portrait. <laughs> I've never used one. Of them. I want to I shoot sports with it. <laughs> hey, it they used uh, to shoot sports with it. Oh, it could do 500th of a second on the at least the shutter what I What do you have, have to do? You have to, you have to get a manual exposure? Manual. Meter. It's 100% manual, plus once you put the uh, film back in, you lose your ground glass, so you have to pre-focus. Hmm. I want. I want. And then, who does? Uh, what's that kid's name down there? Uh, Jackson. Yeah, that he's guy. your age. He's not a kid. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but he just looks at me every time when I ask him a question like this. <laughs> I feel like you, you will probably walk in all weird too. <laughs> I don't walk in all weird. I just walk in. <laughs> does he do that there? No, not to me. No. He's pretty friendly. Does he do four <laughs> by five there? Oh. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> I, sorry, it was a little out of context. Yeah, he does. Um, right now, he'll do black and white, and he's in experimental color stages. So we can do black and white there. And color, technically. Apparently. Yeah, Apparently. he's doing hand process. C forty one. How much is the black and white per sheet? Um, three fifty just for develop. Dude, we're doing it. And five minute portrait. Scans are like seven dollars a Boom. sheet. Boom. Whoa. Because he, there's so much dust, you have to throw it right on the flatbed. It's tough. So we're there's gonna, a lot of. We're gonna do this. Sure. We're gonna do this. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna. Dr so what I'm gonna do? We should buy uh, these 600 vintage cameras, and then no. we can do a lot of five minute portraits. Hey, that would be a great shelf. We can <laughs> extend it all the way around. Oh the my place. god! You need a whole room for no, that, dude. What I need to do is go get a suit from the vintage suit place that has 1920s and 30s style. Sweet. And I need to wear that out into the street and go do the five minute portrait like dude. that. Here's your suit, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> Does it sound like a good idea? I've sure. always wanted to shoot sports that way. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, go ahead. Uh, now, just adding on to that story, the seller notes that most of the older cameras are in working order, and most of the newer 35 millimeter SLRs are not in working order. Uh, he's got them all in glass displays, too, like one giant room, pretty much his own little mini museum. So why is he selling it? I don't know. I guess he just he needs money or something. You know why he's selling it? Why? Apparently, he <laughs> found a girl on geekmeet.com <laughs> who's telling him that he needs to sell everything in order to get married. Mm -hmm. Apple is featuring its favorite photo shot on the iPhone 6 in their latest ad campaign, simply called Shots on iPhone 6. The campaign will feature their best images with the iPhone 6 on billboards in 70 different cities in 24 countries around the world. Apple reviewed tens of thousands of photos published online by iPhone 6 owners, eventually selecting a small amount of them to feature worldwide. Now you can see all 57 of their selected images used in the campaign, along with the reason behind picking them. Uh, they put like captions in each one. Um, they even name the app that was used too, like if it was Visco or Snapseed or Apple iPhone. Um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. They're actually really good images. Can you ask me what I think? What do you I think, I don't think Jared? they're all good images first No, you don't think so? No. I'm not... Look, it's good that, that people are taking photos with it. I get what they're doing. They really push the fact that it's a great way to capture images and it's the 
more pictures are taken with the iPhone than anything else every day, and that makes sense. That's perfectly fine. Uh, it, so, certain images are fantastic. Some of those black and whites that just great images are great images no matter what. But some of the images are, I think, are processed a little over overdone. Lots of grain, cool. lots of noise, and it just seems like I would have preferred to have used a different piece of gear to shoot it. I, I mean, I could see some of them being just snapshots too. Oh. A but percentage of them feel some of them are like very snapshots. artistic, like, though. and some of them are really fantastic. That it doesn't matter because people are like, "Well, it doesn't matter what you take pictures with if you get great results." No, that is correct. It is correct. There are some images that they chose that you look at and you don't give a crap what it was taken with. It's not like anybody goes, "Whoa, what took that Sports Illustrated cover photo?" Yeah, you know, or what's on the cover of the New York Times today was an iPhone picture of the plane sliding off the runway in New York. Yeah, how about that? You know. Or when Sully Sullenberger went into the the water, that was original original iPhone photo on the cover of all those papers. It's crazy, and it looked like crap. But it's the image that was captured. I'm not ripping on what they're doing by any stretch. I'm personally pointing out the fact that some of the images fantastic, mm -hmm. and some of the others I just sit there and I go, they're just snapshots that I think if if a photographer's eye had captures it captured it differently with a different piece of gear that it could have been better yeah and it's but, not saying sorry to interrupt not saying that they didn't shoot on something else either you yeah. know right. like that could have just been a snapshot and they it, were it, also shooting right on and something it could have been and i'm not downplaying that these people th that took it they're i'm not saying they're not photographers because any you know, i'm not saying any of that i'm not being negative it's an unbelievable campaign for for apple most people aren't going to be as cynical or question the things like i do but as a photographer i look at some of that and i'm not jealous of it that's amazing that's awesome what those people got and i'm sure it's going to help just some of the images felt like they were just eh, yeah. and didn't do it others awesome mm -hmm. and that that's all i had to say about that mm -hmm. kickstarter news but this time it's about a successful campaign that failed to deliver uh, something that you're always scared about uh, so after raising nearly half a million dollars or two hundred ninety thousand pounds to be specific that's heavy man it's very heavy it's not your brother trigger though. trap posted an update saying that they failed um the campaign was for their latest camera trigger it's called the ada or ada whatever it's specifically called its initial goal was actually they call it the ada the ada <laughs> American Dental Association. <laughs> initial goal was just 50,000 pounds, which it far exceeded, uh, yet they still couldn't deliver. The update states basically that they underestimated the cost of the manufacturing of the product. They say, we have a final working prototype, but it costs five times more to get to this point than we have planned for, and will cost three times more to manufacture per unit than we had hoped. The upshot of this is that we can't afford to put ADA into production and are refunding the remaining Kickstarter funds to our backers as a result. Now, backers do have the option to get a 20% refund uh, since they used about 80% of the money uh, already. Um, they also have the option to get their money donated to a charity or get 50% in-store credit at the Trigger Trap shop or simply just no refund at all. Now they added, just to address the questions about 100% refund, I'm afraid we won't be able to commit to that. There are a few different reasons, but the most uh, pragmatic reason is this. We simply don't have the money. Our Kickstarter fund was invested in trying to get Trigger Trap Ada into production. The Kickstarter founders always repeat that Kickstarter Kickstarter is not a store, for better or for worse. The great thing about Kickstarter is that you, the Kickstarter backers, can help bring products that wouldn't otherwise exist to market. Market. The downside is that occasionally these products don't make it off the ground, and unfortunately, Trigger Trap Ada fell into the latter category we failed to deliver. Now, the company did attempt to save the project by opening it up to additional pre-orders, but it only managed to attract 5% of the money needed. Uh, they do at least have a full pie chart breakdown of like how they spent the money. Well, that's great. Thanks. Full pie chart. Awesome. <laughs> that's all we got for it's my, our, it's my turn to rant. All our money. It's your turn to, to rip this to shreds. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna sit here and rip it to shreds because I'm I'm in a good mood. But oh, that's good. Yeah. Um. This is the thing about Kickstarter. A lot of people feel like you're entitled to something when you're absolutely not. Mm -hmm. When you're doing Kickstarter, you have to ask yourself: Is is this a reputable company? Which I guess Trigger Trap already had prior products, and you have to then decide: Do they you want to? That's why I don't get. They should have known well, the production Well, th this costs. is the problem. If you're going to go on Kickstarter, you better know the cost of goods, what it's going to cost you. You better be ready to go. In this day and age, I think Kickstarter is more of a place that you go when you have a finished product or an idea that you already know how to flesh out and how to get there. Yep. In this case, to say that you weren't prepared enough is a complete is complete bullshit and you're hurting your, your original company because how are they going to recover from this? Yeah. 
this is th- this is one of the main problems with Kickstarter. I don't like supporting something that's like takes my money for four months, five months, six months, seven months, and then maybe releases something. I was gonna say at least. Yeah. I haven't done a Kickstarter. I've thought about doing Kickstarters for certain things, and it just doesn't. It doesn't make sense. I'm working on something secretly. We're not telling everybody what it is. I know what it is. That it's been in the works for months. Mm -hmm. And the suggestion from that company was, why don't you do a Kickstarter? Because that's worked for us in the past. And you should do that. And I feel that that would have been, that would be doing a disservice to the readers, to my readers, to you guys out there. If I was to offer this product, which is going to be in the 200-ish dollar range, maybe a little more, not less, but it's about 200 bucks. And, and I could have gone to Kickstarter and it probably would have worked. But mentally, I feel like I make money at what I do. Mm-hmm. I sell my own products. There's money on the side that I can invest in taking a chance on myself instead of asking the readers out there to fund my, po- you know, fund what I'm trying to do. I'll fund it myself because I believe in it and it's better for the readers. Yeah. Why make them pay Sit for something handed. for four months? Mm-hmm. $200, over, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And yes, I could lock it up and be like, well, you'll get it later and you get these benefits because that's what people say. Well, you get the, the added benefit on Kickstarter of getting these, you know, for, for 50 bucks less or something. Like the bundles, yeah. Right, you get the bundles. But when I, when I was thinking about doing this project, which is going to hopefully come out shortly, I thought about it and just was like, no, I'm going to fund it myself. I'm going to... Be the one that waits four months, spends my own money, invests in my own my, myself. And it's a lot of money. It is. It was. It was a good amount <laughs> For of one money. person. Yeah. Well, it was a good amount. It's not cheap, but I just felt it would have been doing a disservice to my readers to go to Kickstarter. Yeah. It's it just, and the only way that you know, my whole thing is I didn't want people waiting, spending their money, and then waiting a long time. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to end up doing is getting the stuff. And then doing like a pr- special offer for a, the first week and start shipping them right away. They're available now. That's great. You're not waiting four months. Now, certain other things may work better on Kickstarter because of the viral nature of it. But if you can't deliver and you can't return the funds, now this doesn't happen as often. We don't hear about it a lot. Um, uh, Peak Plate, Peak Designs has done a couple of su- very successful Kickstarters. They have. They started on Kickstarter. As a Kickstarter, yeah. And that's how they made their money, but they were able to deliver. If you aren't able to understand what your costs are going to be, and you raised a hell of a lot more than what you, you know, five times, eight times as much as you wanted, yeah. and, you, and you still can't deliver, then you, f- you, you deserve to fail and you did a disservice to people and you give a bad name to other people that do it right. Like to underestimate the cost that much. What to say all you need 50, is 50,000 pounds and, and you end up and with now almost... Saying, yeah. It's just that, that's my feeling on Kickstarter because people ask me all the time. Like we know people that do photo books. All right, if you don't... Kickstarter is great if you don't have the funds to start it yourself. That's the point of Kickstarter. Exactly. If you do have the funds yourself or... I mean, it's just hard to ask people to fund your projects when you have the money to do it. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's I get it. That's what I mean. That's that was a I, I wrestled with it, and I'm just like, no, I don't think it's fair to ask people to spend their money and get nothing for four months. I personally have only bought one thing on Kickstarter, which I'm still waiting for that teleprompter that we saw a couple of months ago. The we parrot. talked about photo news. Is, is it the parrot? Yeah, but then there's also we saw one in Germany. Uh, at CES, the little one from that other company that already had something similar. But this one was like a hundred bucks, and no, I it was two hundred bucks. Uh, the one I bought, Parrot, mm. is a hundred. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, but we've been getting updates constantly with that, and I personally feel if it's like a hundred bucks or less, I'll take the chance. But I won't risk if it's more than that. Like buying a, one of those drones, for example. There's so yeah. many Kickstarter drones. Dude, you spend fifteen like hundred dollars. Bu- yeah, it's like I'm not gonna spend that much and take a chance. Anyway, um, so yeah, failed. Failed campaign. That's what I had to say about that. People wanted to know. There you go. Chinese company Axiomi? X-I-A-O-M-I? 
Yeah, that's or something like that. Zomi, Ex- Zomi, Zomi. I, Ex- I don't know. They're offering a competition to GoPro with their latest action cam called the Yi Action Camera. Yeah, the great y- name. Eye camera. Yai. Yai. Yi. Ye, whatever. Yang the new Z. camera is less than half the price for the entry level GoPro 2, uh, costing just $64, and it offers even better specs than the entry level GoPro as well. Now, spec wise, it has the Exmor R backside illuminated sensor by Sony. Sony. It shoots 1080p at 60 frames per second, 60 megapixel stills. It's only 72 grams in weight, which I think the, the GoPro is around like 100. Uh, and it supports up to 64 gig max storage. Other features include panorama mode, waterproofing down to 40 meters. Meters, selfie stick support, yes, seven frames per second continuous shooting for stills, uh, and a selection of mounts, including a cat mount you can get. Now, meow. however, it's right, only is it available right meow? <laughs> it's available right meow, but only in China. All right, so that's not competition to, to GoPro and GoPro in China is, it is, but that's is it. so established that it's yeah. they've created a, a, a marketing mega company. Yeah, they really have. Um, a household name, pretty much. A bird watcher photographer named Martin LeMay got a unique shot recently. An image of a weasel riding on the back of a woodpecker as it's flying. Um, now, the image was captured in Hornchurch Country Park in London with a Canon 70D and what looks to be like a 300 millimeter lens. Uh, there's an interview up with the photographer that the BBC did. He basically breaks down like how he shot the image. Um, how he was like walking in the park with his wife and wanted to take a Im- picture of a bird and that happened and he didn't realize it until like, he got home and looked on the monitor that he caught that image. And he didn't shoot raw, right? Uh, I don't know. He I didn't? Don't, I don't think he did. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, but yeah, the image is uh, not the sharpest image, but... No, it's not. I'm sure he... Yeah, you love that, don't you? <laughs> I, I was just like, oh, it doesn't look like it was shot raw because it looks like it's flat and boring. <laughs> A little bit. Weasels are vicious. Dude, they go, this little weasel, They're cutthroat, man. man. Apparently, this is how the story goes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) What what, what, was it, a woodpecker? A woodpecker, yeah. Hey, woodpecker. (laughs) I'm a weasel. You know, I need a ride, man. Can you give me a ride? I got to get over to that other tree where you can peck some wood because I'm about to lay some wood. That's right. There's another weasel over there. She's been waiting for me all day getting ready. Oh, yeah. All right. So how does this work? All righty. I'm the woodpecker. Are you ready to fly? I'm going to let you fly, little guy. You better let me fly or I'll kick your ass because I'm a weasel, man. All right. Let's go. You ready? Okay. Whee! Whee! And that apparently is the story of how the weasel flew on a woodpecker. Apparently. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Spielberg is set to direct a new movie about a war photographer. Uh, he recruited Jennifer Lawrence mm, to play the photographer, who is photojournalist Lindsay Adario, uh, or Dario. The film is based on her book titled It's What I Do, A Photographer's Life of Love and War. Now, no word on when the biopic will be shot or released, though, but that's going to be an interesting movie, I think, especially with Spielberg behind it. It's a war photographer movie? Yeah, war photographer, war photojournalist. Neat. Apparently, she shot like every single war, too. Uh, I mean, since... She- <laughs> for the past, like 30 years. <laughs> Apparently, Stephen doesn't know how many wars there have been. She was there for the Civil War, for the Revolution. <laughs> I mean, she thinks she was in 12 Monkeys. <laughs> oh, God. Another good movie. That's, Sorry. A, that's a great movie. There's never there's a series of now of that, right? Oh, my God. I never heard of 12. That was a Philly movie, too. Come on, Shot Sutter. Philly. That is Philly. That is one of those ultimate classic movies. But I do think that was shot I before I think I've born, prefaced so. enough on the show. I'm not a movie buff. I don't but really it's not 12 either, so. Monkeys. I actually didn't see it until like only three years ago. Oh, my God. That is one of the... Okay, keep going. Brad but that's Pitt's a great movie. freaking crazy in that movie. Great movie. Uh, last, no, not last, almost last news story. A photographer named Marvin Lewis proposed to his girlfriend of five years, Amanda Marie, in a very unique way. They have an, an annual tradition of doing a photo shoot on their anniversary, so he... Uh, How long have they been anniversarying? Uh, eight years, Dude, he said. Dude, excuse me, Mar- Marvin. I guess Marvin. they've been official for five years. <laughs> <Marvin>. hurry up. <laughs> All right, Marvin. Eight freaking years you waited to propose? You're lucky she stuck around that long. Eight <laughs> years is... a. That's like that's like one year before I made that video of me sitting in front of the camera going, no, no, no. You're like a completely different person. I'm like eight, eight, years, ago. eight years, man. Shit or get off the pot. <laughs> eight years. Um, I mean, Sutter's been going out with his girl for like over a year. 
and he's almost ready to pop the question in a very <laughs> unique way. But they do live at his parents' house. <laughs> so I think they may need to find a place to live before they pop. Don't go popping questions. Okay. And don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> Except you probably, you two would probably go chasing waterfalls. Yeah. Because that's what you and Leanne and your little dog Toto, uh, <laughs> Toto Pokey McPokerson guy. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? My name isn't Toto. My name is... Special Agent Dale Special Cooper. Not Agent, Inspector. <laughs> Special Agent Dale Cooper. Did, did you see that weasel that flew on a woodpecker? I wish that was me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me finish the story. So he took to his background flash and projected the text on the background that read, Amanda, will you marry me? The only problem is Amanda didn't see it because it was a very quick flash. <laughs> very quick, and that's what I pretty much was going to say just oh. now. She <laughs> couldn't see it until they actually reviewed the images together, um, which she said yes. I think that is one of the worst ways that you could get proposed. Really? Well, I, think that's I thought cool. that was pretty neat. Yeah. I like the one that the F-Stoppers guy did where... He took it out into the wilderness. If you find that on the F-Stoppers page, it goes way back. And he had her look through the viewfinder and on the ground I've glass. I've seen that one. On the inside. On the on focusing the, screen. On the focusing screen, he said, will you marry That's me? pretty cool. Now, that was cool. <laughs> Marvin, this was not cool. But it because was... they did meet on geekmeet.com. Uh, Lewis says... Out of all the photo shoots have that uh, he's planned and shot, this one was the most important. I asked the girl of my dreams to marry me. He's got the whole thing on video, too, that he shot with like a GoPro. He has a one GoPro facing her on the actual camera, and then he's got a GoPro that he's holding as she's reviewing the images, and you know he's kneeling down. But yeah, so there's a whole behind-the-scenes video on it. Very clever stuff. I liked it. Did she cry? She was crying. Yeah. My favorite... She did the usual, like, oh, my God. Are my, you serious? My favorite proposal video is the one that happens in uh, P Portland. Portlandia? In Portland. In Portland, where it's that uh, Bruno Mars song with the dancing Jews. Oh, yeah. Where she, the girl's sitting in the back of the car with the headphones on. Yeah. And then the family's doing so it. Can you pop good. that up on the screen, yeah, that too, one was so awesome. make a note? Yeah. That one made me cry. And every time I see it, I'm like... <laughs> Oh, that's so cool! It just—it's just so. It's she's laughing her ass off when like it's, it's, an, it's her entire family. That's what makes friends. it great. And friends, it's just, yeah. it was just so funny just watching her just laugh and just and they just keep coming from like every different area. And you know, then the guy the that walks going. up at the end, you're like, really? Oh, it's Portland. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> really. One last story uh, for the final news story. A man named Jonathan Keats wants to set a world record by capturing a thousand year exposure that will end in 3015, making it the slowest photo ever taken. You know, that really, really is going to damage my not cursing today much because I want to say, keep going. <laughs> When installed in place at the Arizona State University Art Museum Sculpture Garden Trellis, three floors above ground, the camera will be pointed at the city skyline so it'll capture how civilization changes over time. Here's how it works. The camera uh, is made out of a solid metal and uses oil paint instead of photographic film. There's a plate of 24 karat gold on the front of the camera that has a tiny pinhole pierced through it. And over a thousand years, color in the paint will fade where the light is brightest, very slowly creating a positive image of the world. He calls this a deep time camera. I feel like someone's just going to steal it for the freaking 24 karat gold. And, you know, a thousand years? There's no way that's going to stay in place. Now, Arizona State says it'll hold an ex ex expedition exhibition of the work once it's complete in spring. Are you kidding me? 3015. Are you kidding me? I hope you guys mark that on your calendars a thousand years from now. What is this like? What is Fry going to fall into the to, <laughs> to the cryo chamber and then in the year oh. 3000 show back up? There's no way this is going to... This is a millennium. This is just bullshit. That's this crazy. is a publicity stunt. I was actually thinking about 2000 years. This guy is a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> I... 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 Uh, uh, it, 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 the I, thing that I, I bothers mean, me is, oh, you get to see the city change. It's not going to change. It's going to be a big blur. It's going to be a it's big blur. It's not like a time lapse where he, you're going to see it incrementally. No, he just said it's going to be like ghostly when it comes to like old buildings being knocked down. You'll still see the ghost of that image, and that's what he was explaining. It's pretty much just going to be a long exposure. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard giant, of. Giant, giant long exposure. What's this guy's name? Uh, Jonathan Keats. Jonathan Keats. This, and yes, I guess it's publicity stunt because we're talking about it. Yep, we are. What are you actually promoting here? Because this is... 
asinine. What's the, what is the real product I mean, this? what is going on here? Because <laughs> nobody's really going to be want? here in 3,000 and something to give a crap about what's going on, <laughs> for one. Two, the picture's not going to work. Because, and, and you can't prove me, prove me wrong. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. Uh, and, and three... Are you kidding me? Go, I'm See, someone's going to forget about it. That's the thing. Someone, you got to tell every generation about this camera that needs to get taken and down in a thousand even years. Even if they get it, how are they going to know how to actually look at the image? Like, to open it up and, like, how are they going to know if, if it needs to be processed or anything? It's going to make a training video. No, because what you, have to do, what you have to do is it's, it's a special process but, where you piss on it. <laughs> like that girl from years, uh, months ago. But, like, will the format change? Like, if you did leave a video behind, you know, the codec that... No, you put uh, it on YouTube. Actually, yeah, YouTube probably will exist then. Can no. you imagine that? No, I, uh, a thousand years a from thousand now? A thousand years. No, come on. That's insane. Can you imagine us sitting here in a thousand years? <laughs> Welcome to Raw Talk <laughs> episode, episode eight. A uh, thousand. thousand. Well, it's, no, it'd be. It's 52 a year times a thousand is 52,000. It'd be episode 52,123. 52, <laughs> Apparently, we got old. <laughs> Steven and Steven Hold and Steven. I'm coming, can, Jared. Can you bring out in uh, Special Agent Dale Cooper? He's got like Cooper, a great beard. Junior, 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 the 15th <laughs> times 27 to, to pie. These are my grandkids, grandkids, grandkids <laughs> that I brought with me today. Is that all we got in photo news? <laughs> That's all we have. All right. <laughs> Let's get to flying solo. Uh, Good photo news. I just don't understand that 1,000-year exposure. Thousands a long time. I could see a hundred years, but a thousand that's I could see one year. <laughs> one year. One Has someone year. even done the one year exposure? I think so. Or did he, this dude just jump straight to a thousand? I, start with <laughs> one year before you go to a thousand years. I would have done a million. Because now nobody <laughs> knows to sit here and say that you're a moron. I mean, I'm gonna just call you a moron. I mean, I'm not really calling you I don't know you personally. You're probably a really nice guy. But the idea there's got to be more behind it. Flying solo. I ask for your questions each and every, not each and every week. Every once in a while when we don't have a guest, we ask for flying solo. I have been putting them up on Facebook asking you about uh, where to post your flying solo questions. And being that I've done the videos, I did it out in the snow yesterday. Ooh. It ended up being really good. And there were a lot of questions that came in. And I think a lot of good ones. Somebody asked a question was like, huh, did you, are you doing flying solo because Han Solo got in a plane crash yesterday? <laughs> I was like, oh. I'm like, how many episodes of Flying Solo have we done? <laughs> was it bad? The plane crash? Apparently, he's in critical condition. <laughs> critical condition? No, you're. I think he's in serious. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Well, the oh. first clickbait ones were like critical condition. No way. Is it critical? Is he that bad? No, plane didn't look that bad. He said that he had like lacerations on his head and neck and. I, I stuff. thought I read that it was okay. He was chasing but... aliens, <laughs> not chasing worst, worst Indiana Jones version. Ever. Yeah. All right. Flying solo. Chris Smith. Good day, fine sir. Good, good day, day to day you. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you already do some Adobe Lightroom video edits, but was curious if you could, would, ever make a Lightroom specific tutorial, i.e. tips when using Dodge Brush, etc. Thanks for, for keeping photo news information hot and exciting. Mm -hmm. We are in the hot works, exciting. the midst of putting together an outline to do our style of a photography editing guide which will so happen to take place in Lightroom yes but it's not how to use Lightroom it's the theories and mentality for how to proper how to edit in our opinion Adam's opinion my opinion two different opinions but two different styles can help you figure out how you can process and edit your images working on that mm -hmm. can you read this one Junior Wyatt's you always pick his questions. Junior Wyatt, let's play a game of Would You Rather. Oh, God. Yeah. Russian roulette. <laughs> These are hard, man. <laughs> Would you rather have no internet or no cell phone? Ooh, that is a hard one for you. I mean, I think I'd have to go with no cell phone because uh, I could have the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Would you rather be able to fly or read minds? I think I want to fly. I think I want to fly, too. Would you rather have more? I believe <laughs> I can fly. I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about you every night and day. I spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar like I'm a, what is it? I don't know. A weasel on a woodpecker. <laughs> I want to feel old. I remember in kindergarten, we would sing like, a funny version of that song. Okay, okay. That was you Space asked for Jam, it, right? He asked for was it. it. Space Jam? 
We're going back in time. What's the year, Sutter? I don't... Uh, 2000... Yeah, 2000 or 2001. We're going back to the year 2001. Everybody come with me. <laughs> I think I was in like ninth grade. <laughs> okay, set the scene. We're in Steven Sutter's kindergarten plat. What's the name of the teacher? Uh... Miss Smith. Sure. We're in Steven I think Sutter. it's Randolph, but okay. Whatever, We're know. in Steven Sutter's kindergarten class. Teacher is Miss Randolph. Okay, kids, everybody sit around the circle. We're gonna <laughs> sing a song right now. It's a big hit by yeah. R. Kelly. <laughs> Every are you kids excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're so excited. Yeah, yeah. So excited. I love Michael Jordan. What are we gonna sing? We're gonna sing I Believe I Can Fly. Are we ready? Okay, what we need, Steven Sutter, why don't you go for the solo? Okay, Miss Randolph, <laughs> I'm going to do it. He's got hipster glasses on. Giant He's got glasses. a big mustache. <laughs> He's got tight jeans and a and penguins on his shirt. No, he's got like a milk stash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mil- oh, milk stash. <laughs> and, okay, so that's the scene. And he's got penguins on his sweater. Oh, God. Uh, and big, big black glasses. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Flapping his wings. <laughs> I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. I spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see you through that open door. And then all the other kids go, open door. Like it's in a like it's an orchestra. And then Miss Randolph's like, Thank you, Mr. Sutter. And you're like, okay. And whoop, 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 back to present day. Boom. <laughs> Bam you I Dude, I love that movie. That movie was great. Plus, they had the Jordan 11s in that. Uh, let's see. Number three. Oh, no, did you say more time or money? Did we just say that? No. Would you rather have more time or money? Time. Okay. Would you rather be half your height or double your weight? <laughs> uh that's I'm, actually a really good one. I, this is such a hard one, but I'm 160 pounds. That would make me 320 pounds at five foot eight. That would probably be pretty dangerous. So I probably want to go with half my height. Would you rather be homeless or in prison? I'm going to take freedom over prison. <laughs> I better go through these quick. Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> what movie, Sutter? <laughs> no idea. I just thought it was funny. Uh, great movie. Let's just leave it and not even tell all them right. what movie that was. <laughs> oh, all right. I Classic. see how it is. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a racist made that video or anything. Oh, God. <laughs> Nothing. Mm. Mel Gibson. I, I don't know Passion. actor names. A movie, like painting his face, big sword. Like Scottish. Like Game of Thrones, but not. Early. Is this like Lord of the Rings or something? All right, sit there. And <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen Go it. Go back to kindergarten and, uh. and sit around the circle. Okay. Kyle Mandis. Hey. Landis. Really? Kyle Mandis Landis. My current issue, you have a com- you have a competing photographer. I love this. He starts with his current issue and it's like you, and then I think he switches to him. <laughs> you have a competing photographer in close proximity to you that says he has, in quotes, years more experience than you, end quotes, but your work clearly shows that you are leaps and bounds a better photographer, but he mm. talks such a big game about himself that people are convinced he is the better photographer. How do you get through to this to show people who is the higher quality photographer. Be a better salesman. He's obviously being a better salesman than you are. My buddy Al Zaroli is one of the worst photographers that you could ever (laughs) think about. And I've told him that a million times when we shot together and he agrees with me. (laughs) And he goes, but people keep writing me checks because they like working with me. Oh, that's terrible. And and I'm like, and your work is just horrible. And he's like, it is. He's like, it's not as good as you and I don't need all your fancy gear because I keep getting the... That's Al's mentality. Business you need man. to be a better... Yeah, Al's a butt... He Quote, unquote, he's a button pusher, businessman, not a photographer first. Wow. He gets the jobs and he shoots... And he get and that's because Al is very. He just openly says it. <laughs> with, that's what we talk it's about. Terrible. That's his thing. You need to be a better salesperson. That's as that's what it comes down to. If they're getting the calls, you, uh, the, he, the, nobody could talk me into hiring them if their work is garbage. If their work is not up to par, and your work is leaps and bounds better. It's an easy no-brainer. So there has to be something else at play there. I thought he could just buy a scary mask and spook him out of town. <laughs> Take all his jobs. <laughs> what? That reminds me of a movie of uh, like Scream. You ever seen it? <laughs> Nathan Boyles. Jared, do you have any ideas on what the next video guide will be? 
Oh, good question. We talked about that. The next video guide goes into production starting Monday. Mm -hmm. We are filming for six straight days. It's with Todd and I, and it is a video guide. Sorry. It is an editing guide to video. Frono's photo guide to video editing or, editing or Frono's video. video guide to editing video. I better figure it out before we get started. You have till Monday. But this is, we. I mean, Todd's been working on the outline for a while. Yeah, it's solid, really solid. He. This is who he made the guide for. Me. Yes. He made it for somebody that... that Perfect example. That m m either it's made for somebody who's never edited but wants to get into editing or somebody like me that has just just does enough just to get enough. by. And he's like, he made it for me knowing how he wants my videos that I personally edit to be better. And and some of the stuff in here is, I mean, the, the whole thing is pretty awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to film it because I, I just think it's going to help a lot of people. And it's a it's a really good way to fast track your learning to editing. And just like and you talked about money. the Lightroom guide, this is also one that is going to be more about the theories of editing versus showing you what buttons and stuff like that to push. Exactly. Yeah, it's not it's 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 program agnostic. Yes, so you it's can use probably anything. gonna be done in Final Cut. Because mm -hmm. that's the same thing applies in in Vegas and in Premiere. The only things that change or just maybe button placements. Yeah, the terminology's all there. Everything's there. It's just, yeah, button placements. Tony Sacco. Hey, Frono's photo. What's up, Stevens? <laughs> Nothing, bro. <laughs> I was recently told to look into trademarks for, for, for any names or logos I decided on upon researching them as well as copyrights. I feel like I'm back to Squarespace. I mean, square one. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You see what I did there, do you? In terms of understanding... <laughs> he did. He wrote he that pointed there. that out, too. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> in, in terms of understanding which I would need or if I even need either one at all, either one at all. So my question to you, what is your opinion on both and how do you and, and, and how did you or would you personally go about them to best protect yourself and your business? I'm mostly interested from a photographer standpoint regarding images, etc. Jared Poland photography, but also from a business owner standpoint, example, Frono's photo. Thanks for Osea. Look, I don't trademarks. I've learned a lot about because I've been trying to trademark certain things for a couple of years and now I'm in the process of doing certain trademarks again. Trademarks are a, are, are a very weird animal. You can get a trademark on something like, let's say, we'll say, I shoot raw. You can, I can get it trademarked for these wristbands or lens cloths or for camera bags or for my camera straps. But when it comes to the T-shirt, it's not exactly easy to trademark the words because they're considered fonts. Gotcha. Now, you can trademark designs but here's what a trademark does. It you get it if you think that there's going to be confusion between your company and somebody else's company. So that's the only time a trademark comes into play is if there's confusion. So if somebody did I shoot raw food, there's not going to be confusion between Sushi. photography <laughs> and that. But then again, all that's going to happen if you have a trademark is you're going to have to fight somebody, which is going to cost you money in lawyer's fees to go after somebody, and you're really not doing much. It's when you get really big, like Nike, you know, the swoosh is trademarked. Just and do it. That stuff is trademarked because it's so ingrained in the society. Yeah. Your name, also, you kind of have some protection if you are using something and can show that you've been using it at X date, I can go back and show where I started using I Shoot Raw. It's on YouTube. It's public. It's out there. But I will get more protection when they give me the registered trademark for certain things. Didn't someone try and sue you or something like a clothing company? G-Star Raw, the high fashion denim company, which is not opposed close by to trademark filing in Europe. In, 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 in London gotcha. for I Shoot Raw saying that there would be confusion. How? There is absolutely no confusion between my t-shirts and their high-end denim clothes. Because <laughs> when None. I think of shooting raw, I think of denim clothes. So if they ever come after me, I've already devised how I'm going to defend myself against them. Should I say it publicly now or save it? Uh, you can save it. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. It's really good, basically. Yeah. It involves me going to their store. Hmm. And I'll just tell you. <laughs> I'll just tell you because it's... I figured you were going to tell me. I'll anyway. tell you anyway. Because you always say, should I? <laughs> and you end up doing it anyway. <laughs> this is what I would do. 
I would fold up my T-shirt. Ooh. I would walk into the store with a camera on, and I would return my T-shirt. Big GoPro strapped to your head. I will return my shirt. I say hi. I would like to return my I shoot raw shirt to your store. At what point? At which point? The attendant behind the counter goes, "We don't sell that shirt." Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I guess it's not confusing between your product and mine now, is it? <laughs> so guess what? Boom. That's only for people watching. Bam and wham. Yeah. Earmuffs over this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. Darren Jefferson. Hi, Jared. I just bought the Nikon 105 F 2.8 micro. Nice. Macro. macro. And uh, any advice on shooting macro photography and options on the lenses in opinions on options? See, see what I did there? Yep. Uh, well, that's tell me what it says. Tell me uh, what it says. It says, any advice on shooting macro photography and options it on this option. lens in general? It doesn't say opinions. Thanks in advance. So I didn't read it wrong. I read it properly. Thank you in, you in, in advance. So all I'll say is about macro photography is that the first time I got a 105 2.8, the original one, and I couldn't get the, it to go to 2.8. A lot of people don't realize that when you are shooting macro, if you're zoomed in, it, not zoomed in, it's a fixed focal length lens, as your Focused. focus changes your aperture will actually become variable aperture, yeah, meaning it, it may sucks. go to F3 or 3.4 or 3.5 or whatever, depending on the distance that it's trying to focus because there's loss of light happening there because of the shallow depth of field nature yep. that's happening with the macro. So don't think that your camera is broken because it's not shooting at 2.8. If you're shooting something at a distance, you're going to see it's going to go to 2.8. If you get something really tightened in the frame, you're going to watch as you lose light. And if you're losing, if you're using it strictly for, strictly for macro photography, I would definitely shoot super deep aperture wise. Well, right, because at, at 2.8, it's going to be super shallow. You're, you're going to have literally a hair line exactly of focus, a as shallow far as your plane shallow goes. focus. Yeah. So that's why I talked about that question because I'm sure that helps a lot of people. Yeah, because I didn't know that too until I got mine. Alan Corden. How can I approach a photographer I like and ask to mentor me? Wait, what? Say that again? How can I approach a photographer I like and ask to mentor me? Okay. Meaning like how can they become yeah. a, a Sutter or a Sam Green or something like that? And it basically went on. Some of the comments said like I've sent them emails and they say yes, but then they don't respond. You got to you, – you can't just rely on the email. Ask them like follow up. Hey, could I come? And, and don't do the can I take you to lunch thing. People ask me, can they take me to lunch a lot of times? And it's like, <laughs> not you. Well, no, not just that. It's just like, <laughs> why well, am I, I going to take place on the street? That's pretty good. Why am I going to take like two hours of time? Like, it takes a lot of time to do that unless there's a really a, a legitimate reason or it depends on the person that's asking. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just have to figure out who like Sutter came to my one of the, the, the Frodo walks we did down by the the Independence Hall, and yep. I don't think he had the idea of working with me. No, I just came to hang out. To came to hang out, and then we started talking, and then... That was the Pulitzer Prize thing, right? The no, we, this was like 2012. Oh, this was before oh, that. Earlier. And then and then Sam Green reached out to me through through YouTube or through email because he was going to go to Antonelli. The only reason I answered his email was because he said Antonelli, that he was going there, and I'm going to take care of that. There's, just, there's no rhyme or reason to why I'm going to pick one versus another sometimes. It's just... Depends on the day, depends on what you're doing, depends on what I'm doing and, and what I need to do. You know, and that just happens. So Sam helps me out, Sutter helps me out, and that's just the nature of how it works. Gotcha. Okay. Justin Zirren. How do you respond to possible clients that don't want to pay to get a shot a shoot done? Whenever a possible Gotta apparently, whenever a possible <laughs> client contacts me about setting up a shoot, they always reply with Quote, unquote, my buddy can just do it for free. With his iPhone 6, Well, right? how often are you getting this for one? And two, he's asking, how would I reply to those people? Well, I don't just... Sometimes I put people in their place. Mm. If I just... Uh, and I just say, screw it. I'm not going to work with them anyway. I might as well get a say in because I don't want to just this have this mentality that it's okay to ask this. But one, I would be like then why don't you hire them? If your buddy can do it, then why are you calling me on the phone? Huh? Yeah. Why? So ask, don't be afraid to ask them why. And one of the other responses is like, all right, go have your buddy do it. That's perfectly fine. But call me when they mess it up. And that's bold for possible clients to be asking him versus like a friend. I've had that friend. happen. Well, I can see like friends asking me like, hey, you know, but like a, cl a potential client being like, oh, I don't have a budget though. 
there, there's times that well there, it's like you're calling me and saying that your buddy can do it then then let them do it yeah. why are you calling me in the first place why are you wasting my time because obviously you like my work but now you're trying to quote unquote bring me down in price i won't use the other term uh I can remind. I can tell you later. <laughs> use the other quote. Uh, not use the other quote. Uh, why are you trying to bring down my? Pro- is that what you're trying? To- you obviously see you like my work. Mm-hmm. So don't give me that crap that your friend can do it. Let them do it then, and then let me. T- and I've done this before. I'm like, you can have your friend do it. You're going to be calling me after they screw it up. <laughs> and, you know, or is your wedding really worth letting your friend do it? Or do you want somebody to do it? Is it really that important? If it's really important, you want somebody who doesn't know what they're doing? Now, you know what? Go have your friend do it, and then, and then let me see the results. I just become a dick sometimes. I do. <laughs> Dylan Johnson, if you are contracted by a potential client inquiring about... Shit. <laughs> Dylan Johnson. 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 <laughs> if you're contacted by a... P- what movie, Steven? I don't even remember what movie. What movie? Remind me. I just How do Silent Mal Brown J's. Cow. Oh, Anchorman. Yeah, <laughs> Silent J. <laughs> Anchorman? I've seen like half of it. What? Dude, Guys, I'm telling you when I say I'm not a movie All person, right, I really Anchorman. mean it. Dylan Johnson. Funny as hell. If you're contacted by a potential client inquiring about a photo shoot and you reply back, but you don't hear anything back from them after that, do you send a follow-up email? If so, what's the appropriate amount of time to wait before doing so, and what would it say? It's a good question. So, yeah, it's a good... And I, and I picked that... And, and keep thinking of questions here for the Wheel of Fro because yeah, we still yeah. have to do that. I'm probably going to forget, but... Well, I already <laughs> forgot. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Johnson? <laughs> the, the thing here is... I don't like doing pricing in emails... Because then that just allows somebody... And I don't like doing emails in, 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 in general when it comes to pricing. I want to get people on the phone so I can understand exactly what you're looking for. I can get a feel for the personality that I'm working with. I can get a feel for everything instead of back and forth through email. But if it started with an email and they're not contacting you, you have absolutely nothing to lose by emailing them back a week later or a couple days later and say, hey, it's possible that you've been... Don't pull the bullshit where you go... Oh, I have been, my email hasn't been working right. Did you get my other email? <laughs> you know, just be straightforward. Hey, I sent this out. It's possible that you either did, maybe you missed it or you've just been really busy. I understand. Can we set up another time to, you know, did you have a chance to look at it? And if, if not, just tell me when you can get to it. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. So you just ask for it. Three, four, probably three days. Biggest thing. Just wait a couple days. Don't freaking do it the next day. No, at People least three are busy. days. Three yeah. to five days. But People should be replying to emails in this day and age multiple Within times a, a day. day. Within yeah. reason. Yeah. Hurt Nix. H E R T N I K S. Cool name. Good name. <laughs> when is Squarespace when are Squarespace critiques coming back? Oh. When I sit down and do some. <laughs> I just haven't been doing them. And it has I guess been a while. I didn't think it has that. been a while since that and rapid fire critiques. I've just been letting it rest. Because sometimes you don't want to overdo it and then have people yell at you, all you do is promote product, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Melissa Sturgis question. That's Wait, what? Is that her <laughs> no. babe? Melissa Sturgis is Mrs. Lister's question. You've accomplished so much, exclamation point. Whoa. If, if your mom was still alive, what do you think would be the thing that she's most proud of you for? As someone whose parents have both passed within six weeks of each other, which sucks, I wonder that a lot with my own business. Mm. So I think what she would be most proud of is that I did it my way and that I found my way in the world, Mm -hmm. finally. Yeah. Because she knew all along, she used to say I was her toughest, toughest student. I wouldn't, you know, I was just, I was her toughest student. She couldn't teach me because I wouldn't pay attention and stuff like that she'd be most proud of the fact that i've i've made my way i found it i did it my way i danced to the beat of my own drum and just persevered through there you go that's that's exactly what it would be great check mark justin bieber just kidding (laughs) justin brester hey brester hey Brester didn't even know her. Can you talk about how to ensure your gear and what is the best solution to get to cover your to cover you in case anything gets stolen? I'm working on something involving this because I don't want to just put out 
bits and pieces over time about suggesting what to do. In the meantime, the biggest suggestion that I have for protecting your gear from something is to use lens tag. Go to lenstag.com. Not only does it protect, it's not really protecting your gear from getting stolen. It's a, if something does happen, you can at least track it through there. Uh, you know, but make sure you don't get a homeowner's policy. If you need to get coverage, get some other coverage that's going to protect your gear in case anything does happen with it. And one other thing about lens tag is if you're using, say, your D800 and it's registered to you, then automatically it's searching the internet for photos that have metadata using that serial number. So if somebody uses one of your photos somewhere, it notifies you. You have a whole list of them on LensTag, and you can go after them. Isn't that only if you're using like the Chrome plugin or something that he has? I don't know. I thought it was just in the app. I don't, I don't know. It don't showed remember. up to I, me. I thought it was more like a plugin or something that you need to download. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. I didn't download it. <laughs> Tom Shepard. Hey, guys. Just wondering, what was the thing that made you realize you needed to get yourself a proper workspace, and how did you make the leap to hiring your first employee expenses-wise? That's a question for me, but I actually don't have a proper workspace. We work out of my loft. <laughs> uh, we've talked home. about looking for a place to have, which becomes a proper workspace. Now, in terms of uh, expense-wise for employee like Steven... It just happens that you have sponsors, you have advertisers, you have the the, the plugs all go towards making this a better possible, and, you know, m to making it all work. But also my own products, the Fronos Photo Guides, the T-shirts. That is how I've built it up is because that is where people get something. It's not sponsored, but they can buy something which helps all of this happen, which brings Steven on board, which makes the quality of the work better, which gives me extra money on the side to then promote the products or to promote the website, which should help more people. And in turn, helping people equals more money. Mm -hmm. It's a business and I love doing it. That reminds me of a, uh, you haven't seen it yet, uh, from Silicon Valley, but, uh, oh yes, the very first <laughs> episode they talk about, and this doesn't ruin anything for you, but everybody in Silicon Valley, one of the things they make fun of the most is we're trying to change the world. We're trying to make the world a better place through X, Y, Z. So whatever they're doing. Yeah. So like, like their little algorithm for how to find porn quicker is really trying to make the world a better place. <laughs> Thank you for that. One, <laughs> one geek beat, one geek, geek meat, meat. <laughs> geek meat at a time. Um, <laughs> So I mean, that's that, I that. think that is the next big step for us, though, is is definitely getting to get a, porn faster. <laughs> that's one of them. No, uh, getting a, a better and bigger workspace. Dale we can Simmons just leave Jr. Production sets. I agree. Up. What are your opinions or suggestions on someone who is legally blind, like myself, how they can improve their ability to chase their dream and love uh, and love of photography and producing quality imagery, other than never give up, which I will not. Don't give up. <laughs> Don't you ever give up. Wait. Is 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 that is did Nixon say that? I'm not a crook it and then don't like give Nixon up. Don't ever give well, up. You said it. I don't know. No, or does Reagan say that? One of the two said that. Probably. Apparently. Appa apparently. <laughs> Um, this is this is extremely difficult, of course. I, uh, First of all, is, is legally blind? That doesn't mean you can't see. Okay, that's what I was wondering. It means that you have very Just bad, bad vision. vision. I mean, there's. In reality, it's going to be difficult, and if you don't play up the fact that you have a seeing impairment and your work is good, then people aren't going to. You know, this is something that you could use to stand out in the crowd. Whether you want to use it at your your disability as a way to get forward, I mean, use what you got. If it gets you there, it gets you there. It's like a guy saying that he wants to have a thousand year exposure. He Who obviously has a disability. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I, I just say per perseverance is if you can make your way in the world today, it takes everything you got. Yeah. Making the way in the world today <laughs> takes everything you've you got. <laughs> na, 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 in all the places sure could help a, a lot. lot. Wouldn't you like to get away and go to a place where everybody knows your name? Great show. Da, da, da. And they're always glad you came. Sutter. He's putting his head down because he doesn't <laughs> want me to ask him what it was from. Uh, what is it from? It took me a minute to Cheers, remember. Cheers, brother. Yeah. Go on Netflix and watch Cheers. There's, there's like season. a million seasons, though, isn't there? There's nine, I believe. There's a lot of seasons. I think there's nine. And there's like 30 episodes a season. Yeah. It's like I've when seen a couple episodes here and there, but I'm not going to... 
No, just skip through. I, they are the most well done. It is one of the. It still holds true today. I think one of the early episodes does take place with a like a a gay guy coming in or something. Yeah, it's like they were pushing the envelope. Mm. What a great show! That was a great show. Uh, okay, Dar- uh, Dale, I'm I'm taking a lot of extra time here. Um, that that's what I just have to. You just have to. You just have to do it. Yeah, I I, I can't really tell you. Don't. Do, I'm not do you think you. there is? Um, strong enough like contacts for someone like that that are legally blind that they just can't really you think there no, is strong no, enough no, contacts no, 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 to... no there's not no there's not so there's really no that's why can... you, when you see really blind people they have the big coke bottles yeah, yeah because yeah. you can't get a strong enough uh, person so they're just super thick kind of right so they're it. super thick what I would say to you you want to get jobs call the uh, the the <clears throat> my dad used to read for the blind on the on the the blind whatever it was look for blind organizations fuck sorry uh, that was bad i was going down the wrong path no 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 <laughs> C- calling a blind organization and asking if they need photos is probably not gonna work <laughs> yeah i, I, wouldn't I, I didn't that. think of that I went, you know in my head i was like i'm like oh this is gonna be a good idea no unless mm-hmm. you're taking braille photos yeah right but maybe they need photos of blind people for their pamphlets for seeing enabled pe- seeing abled people to then donate money. Yeah, to that, the that's what I initially thought you were. I, I didn't think the bad way. I think you brought that upon yourself. <laughs> well, I, I well uh, that's you know how I get I, ideas, I but th- I was gonna say that's how I rounded it up. Spencer Austin Davis Lupel. <laughs> <laughs> how many more names you got there, oh, buddy? Oh, I oh I don't know. It says Spencer Austin Davis Lupel. Maybe that's his name. He's got a dual middle name. So a politician asks you to make a video and, and, and attend a few events with your camera, in quotes. The video is paid. The events, in quotes, aren't so far. The kicker is the politician is part of the opposing party to where you stand. Hmm. Do you take this job? How is it, how is best, how is it best to be professional but not end up in a situation where the politician is expecting you to just help out the campaign? I don't think that... Uh, personally, I could work for the opposition because why would I want to try to make them look good when I don't believe in what they're doing? If you don't believe in what they're doing, you shouldn't be shooting it. it, it yes, I get that there's money because I know we have an editor friend who was editing stuff for a certain party that he wasn't a part of, but it was good money. Yeah. I still can't do it. I'm sorry. I think it just depends on what type of person you are. I could do it. But I don't have strong political feelings usually. I so have strong you have very political strong and you feelings. Don't mind saying them. <laughs> I have strong. I, I could not, like, if the Romney campaign was like, "Come on the road with us," and I'd be, or like Sarah Palin. No way in hell. <laughs> I would take it regardless, but that's me. So you have to decide. You know, one the other the part of the question is how you make it. That you you ask them to pay. They have contributions coming in. Oh yeah, you a lot of your photos and your video make them able to get those contributions. So through you through what you're doing, they get money. So in you should get money. Yeah, take that paper. What are you blotting? I didn't know if I <laughs> poked the table with my oh. pen. John Barlev, Jared, the American business environment has fundamentally changed following the insider trading and savings and loan scandals. Mm -hmm. Explain business ethics and how they are applied today. (laughs) Oh, that sounded like Billy Madison or no, 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 uh, in old school when when the raging Cajun is uh, (laughs) asking the question. So business ethics. I'm not a big fan of the stock market. I think a lot of it is insider trading, which they, is not legal, but it seems to be still running rampant. I think that the stock market is set to hurt the little guy that doesn't have the money and help the big institutions in terms of, and this is going to come back to business ethics, in terms of an IPO, an initial public offering, is initially set for a certain price, and it usually skyrockets right off the rip. But, for example, Twitter was going at an IPO of $26, and it went up to $50 day one. Could you get in at the IPO of, of 26 No. At the bell, it was 46 But the people that bought in at 26 are the banks that are funding the IPO, and they give the opportunity to buy those shares to their people first. So all the big institutions can buy in at the $26 point, and then it shoots up right at day one, and... You get screwed. Mm-hmm. 
So in I don't most mess cases. With that game. So I don't like that game. In terms of business ethics, if it isn't right, don't do it. Do things properly. File your taxes. Have an accountant. If it's shady, don't do it. Jeremy Brewer, I just got back into photography after several years out of it. Listening to your podcast the other day, you talked about uh, a bit about practicing, fitting, fitting that you have a snow day. Because my question is, without a studio, I highlighted it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions on how to practice or what to shoot when cooped up inside for so long due to this lousy and long winter. Thanks for all the info. I really enjoyed listening to you and the rest of the crew. My answer to that is who needs a studio? Do you need a studio to shoot photos? I think a lot of photographers have this, they've romanticized having a physical studio location. Not that you're paying, you're not paying for yours. I am. Yeah, but how much are you paying for yours? I'm not going to say that on here. I'll tell you after. You're probably not paying as much as what it would have been if you needed to rent a space like that, You're correct? saying to rent a regular studio. Yes. What I'm saying is, a lo- I know people that are the, a person that is spending like $1,500 to $2,000 a month to have a location. Unless you're filling that location time in and time again, time and time again, with paying clients where it's actually it's absolute necessity to have a space, then it just becomes vanity. I don't think a studio space and having that nut is worth carrying around until you actually need it. There's a lot of rental spaces these days, shared spaces that you can go and do meetings or work out of that are going to be a lot less expensive that can still make you look professional. You can go and rent a place with five or six photographers, something like that. I just don't think the mentality of, I need a studio to take photos. You don't. You can set up in your little closet. You don't need a lot of space to put up a four-foot backdrop and just roll that seamless paper like we have over here. That's all you need. Yeah, you need a room. That's all you need. Good, Sutter, anything to add? No, I totally agree. I don't really need as big as a space as I have because the majority of my work is headshots and you know basic portraiture, but it definitely does help to oh, yeah. have you know a space where you can work in. If you If you can do it, Definitely do it, but it's not needed if you're on a budget or something like that. Adam spelled A-D-H-A-M-H. Wait, what is it? How is it spelled? A-D-H-A-M-H. Adham. Hmm. Adam Black. Name pronounced like Adam. Hmm. Jared, I work for a national daycare photography company. Wow. And signed a non-compete. The, uh, they allowed me to pass out my card to parents for family shoots on my own time. However, the company recently started offering family portraits. The company maintains this does not compete with me, but I feel it does, and it's time to leave. Do you think it's unethical or just business if I were to talk to the daycares about passing my info along to parents with family shoots after I leave the company, of course? Well, if, they signed a non- if you signed a non-compete then technically you can't compete with them doing that. Yeah. Uh, most of the time when people are working for national photography studios like daycare food, like that's grip and grin, push button stuff, it's not the ideal situation that you want to be in. It pays the bills, but it probably doesn't pay that much. It's time to leave and then try to get people to like your work more than they like their work or work out a deal with the daycare company and be like, look, I can shoot your family portraits. I just want a better cut. Play hardball. It's up to you. You have to then gauge your situation, whether you can afford to leave the job or whether you're going to keep pushing the button for them. Rare Air Works. And somebody had a similar question. R. Cullen Tesca had a similar question. Fro, a friend and I are thinking about starting a wedding photography business together, basically for extra money. I am fairly experienced wedding photographer, and he is just getting into event photography. My question is this. How would you disperse the revenue from said weddings and use of images, i.e. who uses them in their portfolio as well? uh, Sorry, as we will be using my local photo business name. Hmm. I have a few local clients I shoot for and I will most likely be apparently, no, most likely (laughs) be doing all of the editing and sales scheduling at first. I want to keep this fair and have never had paid second shooters that may... uh, that may eventually become a business partner. Thanks for all the great info and videos. Eric Motz, pronounced Eric Motz, <laughs> like the applesauce. <laughs> pronounced Eric so this Motz. Is a, this is a good question, and I have a very yeah. blunt and simple answer. 
do not have a partnership. I was waiting for that. <laughs> in this case, do not. You are bringing everything to the table. It sounds like he's just a second shooter. They almost. are an employee yeah. or a subcontractor. I agree. Everything. It's bad to get into. In my opinion, I've had I've had multiple attempts at partnerships that have have not been a success because I feel that when you have two people that do the similar things, when they do similar things, it's not a good partnership. I have a friend who has a business where his job is to do the task and then the other partner's job is to bring in the business. That is a worthwhile partnership. Steve because Jobs and Wozniak. Because one has, can you get that piece of orange stuff? One has that task. The other has that task. But if you're both photographers doing the same thing, you can't heads. weigh it equally. It's not equal work because you're doing all the stuff. They're going to be a subcontractor. You pay them that way. The other guy's business, I'm not a big fan of starting unless your end is doing video. And the, even the, at that case, if they're doing video and you're doing photos, then you hire them when it comes to doing videos. They have their own business. They then promote for you. They give you all the photo work under your business. You pay them out of your business as a subcontractor. They pay you out of their business as a subcontractor. You own your business because you, you succeed or fail on your own. Rather than fa failing because somebody else isn't keeping up the end, their end of the work and you have to then pay them off to leave. I think that puts an end to that. Yeah, well said. You had a question. You raised your hand. I know. Wait, hold on. Let me. Sutter wait, hold on. Like, hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I Everybody who can't hand. see this at home, Sutter funny. raised his hand. You know, as to give me a signal that he had something to say. <laughs> I turn when I'm done my statement to look at Sutter. I look at him and he gives me this look. You usually say like Sutter, you have something to say. Like you I looked at Sutter like this. You ready? Make sure you <laughs> like that squirrel look. <laughs> That yes, Sutter. Oh. And then he like, sat there, and then he went like this again. <laughs> um, Leanne and I have done shoots together, and I guess it's sort oh, of the same really? thing. Ooh, what kind okay, of all right, oh, all right. Nice. <laughs> is, is, Get are you, are your mind out of the gutter. Are you guys legal? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's sort of how this guy is talking. How he wants to do weddings with his friend. Leanne and I are maybe going to start shooting weddings, and we oh. talked about the money thing ahead of time, and she actually brought it up herself. I'm not going to be doing as much work as you, so we should work out how that's going to, no. you know, the pay no, is going to No, you put work. her in her place. It's your business. You get paid but to do But she shoots. X. She's going to second shoot. She's going to second shoot. She gets paid X per wedding. That's it. No, that's what we that's settled it. on. That's yeah. what I was going to say. That's yeah. it. Yeah. No, yeah End of story. Pretty much. Turn the page. Chapter done. No, that's I was I was agreeing with you. I wasn't fighting with you. I was saying we did the same <laughs> I'm not, exact I'm not thing. She'll, uh, she'll get some other form Lucas of payment. Lucas Kit Kat. <laughs> Lucas Kit Kat said one hand one handed how many push ups can you do? Challenge accepted. <laughs> what? Oh, I knew you were gonna get out. Let me take off my uh You gotta do it on the table. No, I'm gonna do it over there. <laughs> the, ow! No cheating. That can pick me up from here. He's gotta stretch. Got and we've got Jared Poland in the ring now. Ready for ooh, ooh. As we got he a little fluffs his fro going on. Fluffing his fro. He's getting <laughs> he's got his tight jeans on. <laughs> tight jeans. He's taking his socks off. Too. Taking his socks off. Gonna, gonna Jared Poland. We're gonna try both arms. Going for the one arm push up. How many can he do? I think that's one. Down to the floor again, that's two. <laughs> he's, something is cracking on his body. I don't know, it's not very good. <laughs> that's three. Uh oh. We've got another arm. Which arm uh, is stronger ooh, that, and that, why? I don't count that one. My right arm is stronger. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get Wheel of Fro coming because that was the last. I didn't know I could do three of those. Ooh. The, did you see? And did you hear all the cracking? You definitely practiced before we started. I did not practice. <laughs> no, I, I, I you did picked not. that question last night, and it's all you did all day. I picked the question this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's fine. All right, so now that it's time. I definitely couldn't do one arm push. How, how are we doing on time, Sutter? Terrible. We're like an hour and 45 in. All right, but everything's good. So I got to go and pick somebody for the Wheel of Fro, and I'm going to go pick. I did make a note. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? <laughs> you say that every week. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I pick until after we spin because I don't. Did you bleep it I, last week? And bleep what? I did. I bleeped it. Did you? I did. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't listen because I, I don't watch the show. <laughs> it's really good, though. I, I try. I sometimes put it on in the background. I'm like, 
That's an entertaining show, guys. It takes me all day to edit. I and spinning it's... today is blank from blank. <laughs> all right, and and did it landed on the question mark last time, right? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it did, and a the couple, guy yeah. asked for a think tank back. Harry, cool. so, Den- no, no, not Harry Balls. Uh, <laughs> oh, Harry Dennis. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the guy wanted a, for the question mark, he asked for a Think Tank bag, and Think Tank is sending him the bag. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so what do we have on the wheel? We got a question mark. What that means have? you can pick anything you want from around the wheel except for the grand prize. Ooh. Borrow lenses is $250 in credit. A fro prize. Plastic printers is 250 uh, free cards. We've got video blocks. You can go to videoblocks.com slash go slash fro to get a special, what is it? It's 99 bucks for the year. Yes. It's not extremely special. All right? It is special. They do offer it for $99 instead of $79 a month. The reason I give you my code, or not my code, my link, is because it helps us. They're actually coming on board as a sponsor. They're going to be sponsoring Raw Talks one a month. Um, and I'm letting you guys know. It started off with us using the product for a couple of, for a year and then working something out with them and proving to them that they should be working with us. Yeah. That's how this all we works. We used uh, a lot of video blocks clips in the Sennheiser review that we just did. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. That was a really good review. Bing, bing. Make a note. <laughs> um, so that's videoblocks.com slash go slash fro. And I'm thinking I read the about page. If you guys want some inspiration about somebody doing something and then starting a business oh, about really? it, read the about page for how the guy started video blocks. Interesting. I'll tell you, you can read it later. Yeah. But I'm thinking we're going to go to their offices uh, because I want to interview the guy after reading that. I'm game. Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash fro to get your 10 day, uh, 14 day free trial. And please use code fro. That helps us out as well. Black Rapid. You can get a Black Rapid strap. Rode microphone. We are using the bro- Rode broadcasters. We use a lot of different Rode microphones. We used it on the game show as some shotguns to get some extra noise or <laughs> some extra audio. What, game show? Yeah, it was just funny. I can't wait I mean, to watch watch the game show. Their, the stick mic and Bob Barker style and all that. Oh, God. Maria didn't do the magnets too well, did she? Nope. She didn't do very well. Not too well. She messed a lot of them up. The spin again means we spin again. And this is for the Atomos Ninja 2, a $699 value. If it lands on that, somebody's going to win that. Ooh. Adorama picks is for some free stuff. Fro prize. Think tank bag. Audio blocks, same as video blocks, except for it's audio. So you can go to audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. And there you can get it for 99 bucks. Special offer. Squarespace. All right, good. Good job, Sutter. <laughs> Lightroom. You can get a Lightroom bundle. And then road again. Whew. <laughs> it's time to spin the wheel. We should just have an automatic, like, pre-taped thing for yeah, telling the sponsors I like sponsors going through it. Week. I mean, that's the way that no, they feel is. like they get yeah, something yeah, out yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. And then you guys get to, I'm spinning for, I'm not going to tell you. I think I know who, but. Do you? I think so. You could always I saw it. You, I saw you <laughs> check it. Oh. Well, I checked a couple. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Oh, there's one. Yep, that's it. Okay. What time is it, Sutter? Wheel. Oh. <laughs> I almost said, like, when we did the game show, it was, spin that wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, do it again. One more time. <coughs> <coughs> wheel of fro. Around and around it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. The wheel of fro is about to stop. Nobody look. Everybody look away. Everybody look away, and we're going to turn when it officially stops. I can't see that camera over there. Oh Don't my God, look. What is it? Don't look. What is it? Three, oh my two, God. one. Plastic, plastic printers! printers. Oh, yeah. oh, plastic printers! Oh, oh I God. thought it would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a good prize because those cards are really good. Um, <laughs> I thought it would have been a cool prize. <laughs> well, I, you know, there's certain prizes I really like on the board, uh, but I do love those cards, by the way. They're really They cool. are really good cards. And every, every single time we give them out, man, people hear 10 like, minutes of people saying, they're like, this is an so awesome cool. card. Definitely keeping this one every time. It is. So it's great. You out there, if your name is... Melissa Sturgis question you just got 250 free cards yeah. from plasticprinters.com you can check out plasticprinters.com for all of your plastic printing needs including condoms made of plastic <laughs> not really making condoms made of plastic and oh, I did not curse very much in this show thank you to the person out there I toned it down but it was still apparently funny apparently apparently <laughs> okay so we have reached the uh, the the ending. Now, Gear of the Week was the Atomos, correct? The Gear showdown? of the Week was the Atomos. Okay. We talked. We just talked about it earlier because just it was make sure it was their Pluggy McPluggerson week. Gotcha. And we talked about that, and we're gonna start working that into our videos. Yep. We're gonna be using the 
Well, we used that one and that one. Oh, God. I, We're I, so many Did you hear all of the cracks when I was doing that? <laughs> it sounded like your body was falling apart. But, can you, <laughs> but I did three. They were legitimate. They were good, yeah. They were, you, can you put up a number each time I do it? <laughs> all right. Bing, bing, bing. bing. Can you make right. Super Mario jump off his back? <laughs> That's true. I love those videos when somebody like Madonna falls and then it's like they get a character to <laughs> throw a rope <laughs> around her. So RKO out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. Those are Street funny. Fighters. Or the kid who is on his bed because his brother threw, you know, his dad br- threw oh out his games God. and he's just going like this and it's like he's getting electrocuted. <laughs> this stuff is funny. Um, all right. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging in there. I thought this was funny. That was oh, yeah. good. It's thank good you. Episode. Thank you to Adamos for being this week's sponsor. Thank you to everybody on the Wheel of Fro. Thank you, Sutter. Sure thing. Thank you, Stephen Eckert. You're welcome. And don't forget, guys, if you do listen on iTunes, please leave us a review and a star. Yeah. Hopefully more than one if you like it. And if you don't like it, so be it. 11 stars, it preferably. It is <laughs> what it is. And that apparently... Apparently... Uh, Apparently, I. You do par- it. You do it so good. Apparently, my grandfather said that I'm apparently too small to ride the ride, but I can definitely eat cotton candy. Apparently, we have to go right now. Jared Poland, Fronos. Oh, we never announced where you can go to get the photo news. That's fronosphoto.com slash rawtalk hyphen 123. Wow, we usually always do. I know, we did. Mm. And that's where we're going to end it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Apparently. (laughs) 